All that and more coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Protests continue in the St. Louis area as a grand jury nears a decision in the police killing of unarmed teenager Michael Brown. The grand jury is set to reconvene today as it weighs whether to bring charges against Officer Darren Wilson. This weekend saw rallies in Ferguson and the neighboring community of Shaw amidst expectations of an imminent announcement. At least eight schools in the Ferguson area have closed in anticipation. Wilson's been in talks with Ferguson officials on resigning from the police force even if he's not indicted. He's also met privately and off the record with a number of prominent news anchors to discuss a potential interview. The grand jury is made up of 12 people. Three of them are African-American. Five of them are white. President Obama addressed the pending grand jury decision in an interview this weekend with ABC. Obama urged demonstrators to remain peaceful. Well, I think, first and foremost, keep protests peaceful. Um, you know, this is a country that uh, allows everybody to express their views. Any event as an excuse for violence uh, is contrary to rule of law and contrary to who we are. I've asked uh, Eric Holder to do is to not just engage with the folks in Ferguson, uh, but to engage nationally in a conversation between law enforcement and communities of color that oftentimes feel as if they are not being treated fairly by uh, law enforcement officials. In a video statement Friday, Attorney General Eric Holder unveiled new recommendations for law enforcement agencies on the handling of protests. The Justice Department encourages law enforcement officials in every jurisdiction to work with the communities that they serve to minimize needless confrontation. Now, of course, I recognize that progress will not come easily and long simmering tensions will, will not be cooled overnight. These struggles go to, to the heart of who we are and who we aspire to be, both as a nation and as a people. And it is clear that we have a great deal of important work still to do. The FBI and other federal agencies have sent dozens of agents and officials to Ferguson ahead of the grand jury's decision. On Sunday, the St. Louis County Circuit Court said there's no guarantee grand jury evidence in the case will be made public after a decision is reached. As Ferguson waits to see if Officer Wilson will be charged with the murder of Mike Brown, at least two more unarmed African Americans have been killed in police shootings nationwide. On Saturday, 12-year-old Tamir Rice was shot dead in a Cleveland park. Rice had been playing with a pellet gun. Witnesses had called police, warning he was waving it around, but at least one also stressed it was, quote, probably fake. An officer ordered Rice to put his hands up, but then shot him when he reached for the toy. Rice's killing comes months after police in Beaver Creek, Ohio, fatally shot 22-year-old John Crawford after he picked up a toy gun inside a Walmart. Meanwhile, in New York City, an unarmed African-American was shot dead by police in a Brooklyn housing project Thursday night. Akai Gurley was in the dimly lit stairwell of the Lewis H. Pink houses when he came across two officers. Police say the shooting appears to have been accidental and that Gurley was, quote, totally innocent. Protesters are calling for the officer's arrest. On Saturday, New York Assemblyman-elect Charles Barron helped lead a march from the shooting scene to the police office for housing developments. This is an outrage. We are angry. There's no way, no way a young man in a stairwell with two heavily armed police officers, and he's unarmed, should be dead. This is madness. It must stop. People are outraged. This is happening all over the country. They have no value for black life. I don't want to hear nothing about a dimly lit stairwell. I don't want to hear nothing about him being startled. This young man should still be alive today. The officer, Peter Liang, has been placed on modified duty pending the outcome of an investigation. Akai Gurley and his girlfriend had decided to take the stairs because the elevator in the housing project was so slow. He leaves behind a two-year-old daughter. 
President Obama has signed his historic executive order granting temporary legal status to over 4 million undocumented immigrants, protecting them from deportation. On Friday, Obama followed his action with a rally in Las Vegas, where he repeated his call for congressional passage of comprehensive reform. So Las Vegas, I've come back to Del Sol to tell you, I'm not giving up. I will never give up. I will never give up. I will not give up. So, so we're not get, we're not we're not giving up. We're going to keep on working with members of Congress to make permanent reform a reality. But until that day comes, there are actions that I have the legal authority to take that will help make our immigration system more fair and more just. And this morning, I began to take some of those actions. Republicans have vowed to challenge Obama's executive action when they take control of Congress next year. Potential methods include lawsuits, blocking executive branch and judicial nominees, and using spending bills to defund implementation. In an interview Sunday, President Obama said his response to Republicans is to pass a bill. President Obama has secretly extended the U.S. role in Afghanistan despite earlier promises to wind down America's longest war. According to The New York Times, Obama signed a classified order that ensures American troops will have a direct role in fighting. In addition, the order reportedly enables American jets, bombers and drones to bolster Afghan troops on combat missions. And under certain circumstances, it would apparently authorize American airstrikes to support Afghan military operations throughout the country. The decision contradicts Obama's earlier announcement that the American military would have no combat role in Afghanistan next year. Meanwhile, at least 40 people have been killed in eastern Afghanistan after a suicide bomber attacked a volleyball match. According to the government of the province, at least 50 more were wounded at the tournament final. Most of the casualties were civilians. We'll have more on Afghanistan after headlines. Iran and six world powers, including the U.S., are expected to miss a self-imposed deadline of today for reaching a nuclear deal in the latest round of talks. A long-term agreement would allow Iranian uranium enrichment and relief from crippling U.S.-led sanctions in return for extensive international inspections. But the U.S. has already floated the idea of extending the talks with the two sides still far apart. Key issues include the parameters for Iran's enrichment program, the timetable for easing sanctions, and how long the deal would last. The extended talks are expected to resume next month in Oman. Dozens of people have been killed in an attack by the militant group Boko Haram in Nigeria. The victims were residents of a northeastern fishing port and were reportedly shot on sight. Meanwhile, in Kenya, at least 28 people were killed Saturday when al-Shabaab militants attacked a bus in the town of Mandara. The Kenyan government says it's killed dozens of fighters in a retaliatory operation. The Israeli cabinets approved a measure that would legally define Israel as the state of the Jewish people, not of its citizens. Israel's always defined itself that way, but the bill would codify that into its basic laws. The full Israeli parliament will vote on the law later this week. A report from the Republican-led House panel has debunked Republican accusations about wrongdoing by the Obama administration after the fatal 2012 attacks on the U.S. diplomatic compound in Benghazi, Libya. The report from the House Intelligence Committee follows five other reports which also found the administration did not purposefully provide misleading information. The report comes six months after House Speaker John Boehner created a special panel with a budget of $3.3 million to probe the Benghazi attacks. Democrats accused them of mounting a witch hunt in an attempt to tarnish the reputation of Hillary Clinton, the presumed front-runner for the Democratic nomination for president in 2016. She was Secretary of State at the time of the Benghazi assault. The University of Virginia has suspended its fraternities following an article that revealed a pattern of sexual assault and impunity. 
The report in the magazine Rolling Stone focuses on a student named Jackie who was gang-raped at a fraternity during her first year on campus. After she reported the rape to the head of the school's sexual misconduct board, the administration took no action, not even to warn students of a potential risk. Jackie later encountered two other women who said they were victims of gang rapes by the same fraternity. After the article went viral, Rolling Stone received what it called a stunning response from readers sharing their own stories of sexual assault at UVA, the University of Virginia. School President Teresa Sullivan called the article's revelations appalling and announced the fraternities would be suspended until the start of next semester, a period of less than two months. Dozens of people have been arrested near Vancouver, Canada, in a blockade against test drilling for an extended oil pipeline. Protesters have camped out on Burnaby Mountain to stop the company Kinder Morgan's plans to expand its Trans Mountain Pipeline, which brings tar sands oil from Alberta to Canada's west coast. Protester Tamo Campos spoke out after his arrest. Why are we putting our economic system, the market, above the very ecology that we all depend upon? We're more dependent on clean water, fresh air, and clean soil than the market. It's the thing that keeps us alive. And we have to stand up to unjust laws to make those the laws, because those are the laws that have always governed our lives. And Indigenous people have had natural laws that predate colonial laws by thousands of years, and we need to respect that. Campos is the grandson of the prominent Canadian environmentalist David Suzuki. An 11-year-old girl was also among those detained on Sunday. Hundreds of people rallied outside Fort Benning, Georgia, over the weekend for the annual protest calling for the closure of the controversial military training base there, formerly known as the School of the Americas. The Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation, or WISC, has been used to train Latin American soldiers in combat counterinsurgency and counter-narcotics. On Saturday, protesters also rallied miles away at the privately owned Stewart Detention Center in Lumpkin, one of the nation's largest prisons for undocumented immigrants. At least five people were arrested. Protesters included Courtney Collins, a youth activist from New Jersey. I definitely had to tell all my teachers before we left that, like, we had to go on, like, I wasn't going to be in school for the next two days. And when they asked why I was going down to Georgia, I said that um, I was going on a protest um, to, for, for SOA, and that when they asked what that was, I just explained it as a school um, where they take in people from third world countries and train them in democracy, but they're really teaching them how to torture people, and, like, they send them back down, and they're major contributors in genocides and just awful, awful situations. An Ohio man has been freed from prison after spending 39 years behind bars for a crime he didn't commit. Ricky Jackson, 59-year-old African-American man, had been jailed since 1975 on a murder conviction. The prosecution's case was based on the testimony of a 13-year-old witness. After a 2011 investigation, the witness recanted his testimony, saying he had implicated Jackson and two others under police coercion. The witness, Eddie Vernon, said police had fed him the story and threatened him with the arrest of his parents if he didn't cooperate. On Friday, Ricky Jackson was freed after prosecutors dropped the case. How did it feel? It's uh, extraordinary. I'm very happy. Just needless to say, you know, words can't express how I feel right now. I'm just glad to be out, glad to be a free man. What are you going to do? Where are you going to go? Wow. I mean, you know, you sit in prison for so long, you think about this day, but when it actually comes, you don't know what you You just want to do something, you know, besides what you've been doing for 39 years. Okay. When you heard the judge say an hour ago, you're a free man, goodbye, talk about what you were feeling. What was going on that we couldn't see? I mean, it was, uh, it was like an emotional roller coaster, you know, just, I mean, the English language doesn't fit what I'm feeling right now, you know, it's just, I mean, I'm just on the emotional high right now. With nearly four decades wrongfully behind bars, Ricky Jackson is the longest held U.S. prisoner to be exonerated. Another defendant who serves slightly less time, Wiley Bridgman, has also been released. And former Washington, D.C. Mayor Marion Berry has died at the age of 78. 
Barry served four terms as D.C. mayor, making a 1994 comeback after being jailed for smoking crack cocaine and FBI sting. Though known for substance abuse problems and allegations of cronyism, Marion Barry was celebrated as a brave organizer during the civil rights movement and as the nation's first African-American activist mayor. Washington, D.C. Mayor-elect Muriel Bowser paid tribute on Sunday. We will miss Mayor Marion Barry. He has been an inspiration to so many people and a fighter for people and a champion uh, for the people of Ward 8. Uh, Mr. Barry, I can say this, uh, lived up until the minute uh, the way he wanted to live. And uh, he has left a, a strong legacy for so many young people uh, to follow. President Obama also honored Barry's life and legacy, saying in a statement, quote, as a leader with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, Marion helped advance the cause of civil rights for all. During his decades in elected office in D.C., he put in place historic programs to lift working people out of poverty. Again, those are the words of President Obama about the late Marion Barry. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman.